electricity, and magnetism. Hi right, folks, welcome to the next lecture in electromagnetism. Today we're going to be talking about the quantization of charge, which is the second most fundamental property in uh, when it comes to charges. So let's go ahead and write that down. That's worthy of writing down. And that's going to be the quantization, the quantization of charge. Okay, so what do I mean? What do I mean by quantization of charge? Okay. Well, what I mean is that every charge we find in the, uh, in the universe, every charge that we observe in experiments are going to be a multiple of the charge carried by one electron. Okay? And what is the charge? What is the charge carried by one of these guys, one of these uh, electrons? What's the charge on this electron? Well, the charge on any electron is going to be expressed in coulombs. Okay? And we can go ahead and write that down as the charge carried by one electron is going to be 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Now, here's a question we often face. What is charge? What does charge actually mean? Does anyone in the audience have an answer to that? What is, what is the definition of charge? Uh, anyone in the audience would like to answer that? Yes, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Rodriguez. Yeah. So what is charge? What does charge mean for you? Uh, would you like to offer a guess? Yeah, sure. Okay, or... You mean electric charge? Yeah, so what is electric charge? Oh. Uh, it's a physical property of matter. Physical property that, of matter. That causes us to experience a force when placed in an electric field. Okay, okay, so charge so charge is equal to mm -hmm. it uh, well uh, to those students i simply tell them to look at the back of my chart which says that memorization is a crime now unfortunately that sounds like a memorized answer but we can fix that we can fix that why charge is a physical property of matter but we can say that about everything all matter has physical properties my hand is solid, yeah, that's a physical property. But what does that mean? That means the atoms in my hand are tightly packed. When we say charge is a physical property of matter, what do we mean? We mean that charge is something that causes some matter to come together and other matters to come apart. And it does so in an inverse squared relationship. So as you get farther away from your charge, the magnitude of that repulsion or attraction is going to be halved or quartered or one eighth. Okay, and we're going to investigate those later on. But today, I want to focus on this property of charge, which is the quantization of charge. All charges in the observable universe are going to be multiples of the charge carried by one electron, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Okay, now there was a very, very nice experiment done by J.J. King in 1960 that actually demonstrated this fact the quantization of charge and he showed what did he show he showed that the charge carried by a proton is equal to the charge carried by an electron now today we're actually going to try out that experiment but first i want to ask the audience how would you show that anyone in the audience want to guess how would you how do you know the proton and the electron have the same charge who wants to guess who wants to guess what's that how would you know that the proton and electron have the same charge how can you kind of uh, test that? Uh, we want a hint? Yeah. Well, we actually need a balloon. Okay. So here is what King did. He took a balloon. Okay. And he pumped it up. So let's go ahead and first of all, first of all, we need something to put in our balloon. What are we going to put in our balloon? We're going to put some hydrogen molecules, some hydrogen molecules. So let's go ahead and uh, draw 
draw an analogy of our balloon here. So here's my balloon. Okay, here's my balloon. And inside my balloon, people say balloons, uh, when you pump them up, they're made of helium. Yeah, whatever. But we're going to pretend we have some hydrogen molecules inside of our balloon. So here is H2. Here is another molecule of H2. Here is another molecule of H2 and so on and so forth right so you have a bunch of these hydrogen molecules okay now we uh, designed the experiment in such a way that no hydrogen ions are allowed to leave the balloon so okay so imagine i put a kind of cap here in real life i don't have a cap or a seal but you get the point no hydrogen ions uh, are allowed to leave the balloon now how can i represent the hydrogen inside of, uh, of my balloon well i can I can take some of the audience's uh, food. So let's go ahead and... Uh, okay. So I have some hydrogen molecules in my balloon. Now, just like JJ King did, I'm gonna pump up my balloon, okay? So let's go ahead and pump up our balloon. Okay, okay folks, so now, I have a balloon of hydrogen molecules. Who agrees this is a balloon? Who agrees this is a balloon? Raise your hand. Okay, so now this is gonna be some, some experimental physics for the audience. Okay, so first and foremost, first and foremost, the first thing we're gonna say is how many hydrogen molecules do we have inside of this guy? Okay, so we have, let's go ahead and use a better, better marker. So we can say that we have this many hydrogen molecules, five times, 10 to the 24 molecules of H2. That's how many hydrogen molecules uh, we have inside of this balloon. Okay, and those hydrogen molecules are represented by uh, Chonachu. Okay, so I want the audience to go ahead and tell me how can I convert 5 times 10 to the 24 hydrogen molecules into grams? How heavy is this? Uh, let's see if the audience can figure that out. Uh, yes? Saborno, please uh, tell us how can we find out how heavy the balloon is? Or uh, Mr. Alvarez, or Mr. Rodriguez, would you like to tell us how heavy uh, the balloon is? Okay, so how many molecules of hydrogen here? Two. Uh, no. Five times ten to the twenty-four Quick. Uh, molecules of hydrogen, right? Five times ten to the twenty-four molecules of what of hydrogen okay and how many molecules in one mole do we um, six, do times 10 to 23. six times 10 to the 23 uh, molecules in one mole of h2 okay we are almost there we are almost there okay and how heavy is one mole how many gram is one mole of h2 it's, um, it's well one gram not one gram, that's two, the two grams. two grams. Yeah, okay, so one mole of H2 is two grams. And now we can convert. See, now we can convert from the number of molecules to the, to the gram. So we can cross this out, cancel these out, cancel mole and uh, mole and mole. Okay, and what are we left with? 5 times 10 to the 24 times 1 mole over 6 times 10 to the 23 times 2 and that's going to give us about 16.33 grams or about 17 grams of uh, hydrogen molecules. Okay, now what happened? What happened? Um, King assumed, King assumed that if each hydrogen molecule had a proton and an electron and the proton's charge differed from the electron charge by one in a billion. So if each proton had a different charge than each electron by one in a billion coulombs, then each hydrogen molecule would have a net charge of two times 10 to the negative nine coulombs. And so the whole, the whole tank of hydrogen molecules, the whole balloon of hydrogen molecules, five times 10 to the 24, uh, molecules is going to have what? 5 times 2 is going to give us 10 times 10 to the 24 minus 9, 15 coulombs. So that's going to give us 10 to the 16 coulombs of net charge. 
Now, how can you measure the amount of charge uh, on this balloon? Does anyone know how we can measure how much charge is in this balloon? Audience, audience, yes. How can we measure the charge on this balloon? What can we use? Draw it on the here. Electroscope. That's what we can use. An electroscope. Yeah, we can uh, we can put the balloon near an electroscope and see if the leaves of the electroscope move. And when J.J. King did that, he saw that the leaves did not move. What does that mean? That means the electron, the balloon had no charge. It had zero net charge. That means the proton and electron do not have a difference in charge by one in a billion. And today that has been experimentally verified up to two, up to 10 to the minus 16 coulombs. Okay, so we know almost for a fact that the proton and electron have the same amount of charge. Okay, now I'm just gonna leave you with the sound of the balloon deflating. All right, folks, uh, that's it for this lecture on electromagnetism, and uh, we'll check you out next time.